Richard Fitzwilliams joins us now live from London. Richard, good to see you. I mean, first of all, how big of a find really is this? And, and to have found it on Facebook. Oh, uh, it's very significant, and it also highlights that there is so much work still to do when it comes to restitution to the original owners of works looted by the Nazis. I mean, during their deprivations, the Nazis are supposed to have looted, in one way or another, something like 20% of European art. It's estimated that possibly up to 100,000 pieces may still be who knows where to be returned. So this is significant. It's amazing. I mean, 20%, you think, just in respect to art that the Nazis had actually stolen decades ago. And still, I mean, the black market for art goes so far back. And unfortunately, it is still thriving today. So tell us how it works and how some of these illicitly acquired pieces end up in legitimate museums. Well, for example, I mean, there have been some absolutely stunning discoveries and also some tough legal battles. I'm referring particularly to, I was in New York uh, a couple of months ago and went to the New York Gallery, and there was the portrait of Adele Block. Bauer by Gustav Klimt, one of Klimt's greatest works, absolutely without doubt a superlative painting. Because of problems with the wills and the fact that it had landed up at the Belvedere Museum in Austria, the museum contested its return to a member of the family who was living in the United States. And this was quite literally taken to the United States Supreme Court before it had been decided to allow the painting to return to its rightful owner, and now it hangs in the newer gallery. But, I mean, this goes back to a period during the Second World War where out of the most grotesque greed, the Nazis looted everything they could possibly find. And if you look at something like the Ghent altarpiece from Belgium, for example, I mean, that was saved by the so-called Monuments Men. They were immortalized in a film by George Clooney, but in point of fact, led by George Stout, a collection of professors persons who were knowledgeable in history and so forth before the Second World War was over were trying to return even then these works to the rightful owners. But you're right, there is a very substantial black market in these works, as there is in so many artworks which have been looted, especially those in the possessions of former imperial powers. So this is, it's very, very difficult because there's no international convention on restitution mm. and very often matters are complicated. You're not sure who's left what to whom and who the real owner might be and documentation is missing. Right. That brings us back really to the beginning, the, fo the fact that this painting by, by Gary Melchers this winter, uh, it's called, was found by a Facebook post uh, and via this multinational effort to try and recover what was stolen uh, by the Nazis decades ago. Tell us about that effort. I mean, it's really kind of civilian-led. How su successful has it been? Uh, yeah. Well, it has been successful to the point where from time to time individual works can turn up, but equally in 2013, absolutely staggeringly, and this gave you an idea of the uh, monstrous nature of the regime and the fact that it had so many profiteers and racketeers working for it, the Hildebrandt Gerlit and his son Cornelius, who inherited this collection, had, it was discovered, several hundred paintings or a large numbers of which, and this is still disputed, um, have been given back or will be given back to their owners. Gerlich, though a quarter Jewish, was one of the Nazis' top art dealers. And throughout Europe, he was extremely active, and all these works were kept in the Gerlitz home. So you can imagine how sensational these finds can be. I mean, the Ghent altarpiece was saved uh, by the Monuments Men from uh, a salt mine where the Nazis had, in fact, prepared to detonate charges so that the, uh, the actual tunnels would be closed with bombs. So you That's really amazing. are dealing with the most extraordinary misuse of uh, a grotesque okay. tyranny and the difficulties of, even today, 
discovering so many works and there will still be a great deal right. to be discovered and return to their original owners. Fascinating stuff really movies are made out of. Richard, thanks so much for walking us through that. We'll get, uh, or actually we, we're completely out of time. So that's a wrap for me on this news hour.